Sean. I need to find Shall out. Shall I start? You know what? It's time to start, isn't it? No. If you're not ready, we're not ready. You can take five more minutes if you need five more minutes to get everything operating right. If I can't get it operating, we're just going to go anyhow, right? Yeah, we have to. So, but, but we want to give you five minutes because there's a lot of people that may be out there ready to watch online. Yeah. We want to at least try to keep our things going. Frank. Yes. Pray for me now. Okay. Oh, Here you are. I would like to see if somebody could. Does somebody have a machine where they could verify whether it's on YouTube? Like yes. I think we're on YouTube now. Whoops. Isaac will be checking that on Mike's uh, Apple phone. If you could check if it's on YouTube and if it's on Facebook, yes. That Welcome. Be I can't hear Glad you're here. <coughs> YouTube is working. YouTube is on. Now we gotta do Facebook. He's checking Facebook next. Thank you for coming. He's checking Facebook now. It's supposed to go on live at the right time. YouTube, I had to kick it manually. start the meeting and I'll try to figure out Facebook. But we, we, we'll give you three more minutes and we will start. How's that? Yeah. It's uh, 7.03. Two to three minutes.
Can you silence your phone? Seven oh six. Shall I start? I'm almost at this point. I think. I'm sorry, was that a yes or a no? I'm Dr. Linda Carney, and I want to welcome you to Health Reboot. Thank you so much for being here. I'm delighted that you're here. I'm delighted that we are sharing this with our audience on Zoom, YouTube, and hopefully Facebook Live. We're working on it. I want to thank my husband, Sean Carney, for his help in making this presentation possible, uh, as well as the help of Dr. Meshack Samuel, Dr. Ferdy Samuel, and Pastor Michael Wolford, and all of the team of people and volunteers who have been helping to make this possible. We're delighted to be with you. If you could silence your cell phones, that would be wonderful. None of us are establishing a treatment relationship, but I hope that if you listen to the information that we're providing this week, you'll keep close contact with your doctor or healthcare provider so that medication doses can be adjusted. What the information we're sharing is powerful. And sometimes blood gets thinner if you're on medication for that. And blood pressures go lower and blood sugars go lower. And we don't want anyone to have any um, if effects of too much medication. And so sometimes those doses need to be adjusted downward and your doctor is qualified to do that. But we're offering hope through the Health Reboot. It's an exciting new public health seminar. And uh, we're... Um, coming to you because until the lockdowns of 2020, I practice family medicine using food as medicine. Here in this office, as you can see, in Texas, just south of Austin, Texas, I'm here to bring you some hope from some of my success stories of my former patients in my general medical practice near Austin, Texas, where I saw food choices heal diseases for those willing to consider food as medicine. But when the pandemic shut down my practice, Sean and I retired from office medicine and we moved to Arkansas. And now we're hoping to start teaching over the internet. But this website, drcarney.com, is still sharing the scientific evidence of how our health choices can make a big difference. And our, the good news is that even though the last 18 months have touched our lives in challenging ways, financially, physically, emotional health, for the worse, science has shown that our health choices can prevent many types of heart disease and stroke. 
In fact, our health choices can prevent or reverse high blood pressure, diabetes type 2, and excess body fat and overweight. And the choice is yours, my friends, free of charge. This seminar is offered to the community of Pine Bluff and the wider world online because when we heard, especially for Pine Bluff, all that this city has been through in the past 18 months, we wanted to bring hope without charging money or selling any products. The health education that we're offering to you is brought without cost because we care about Pine Bluff. We can learn these health secrets together and that gives health power back into the hands of the people. Last year in 2020, I flew to the beautiful island of Guam to work in the emergency department there. I wanted to do my part as a frontliner because I care about people and that's why Sean and I are staying here this month in Pine Bluff. And in March of this year, I flew back to where I now live in central Arkansas where I met Pastor Michael Wolford. He and his wife told me about Pine Bluff and they described the suffering of this community over the past year, how the pipes froze in February. Our plumber told us that uh, same thing, that how worried he was for Pine Bluff when uh, the pipes froze here. It was Pastor Wolford's idea that we join forces and bring to you in Pine Bluff and online a message of hope and healing so that you can build your immune system, not. Uh, to prevent COVID and also prevent or reverse those diseases that make us more susceptible to COVID and other um, diseases. And so what are those diseases? Well, COVID and the coronavirus seems to want to strike people who are overweight. And this is Sam and his success in reversing his overweight can be yours when you learn which food choices help Sam succeed. COVID is also more likely in diabetics, those with heart disease and kidney issues. So we're gonna talk about how to reverse these diseases all this week with different topics each night. And we're gonna to talk tonight about building up our immune system, the many different ways, exercise, sleep, sunlight, fresh air, all the things that we can do that science has shown us builds our immune system so that we can get through this together. We'll talk about exercise first. It's hard for anyone to argue about the healthiness of exercise. Everybody knows exercise is good for you, but they don't realize quite how good it is. I think if exercise were put into a pill, it'd be the world's best seller uh, for all that it can do. So let's talk about those who got sick with COVID. If before they got sick with COVID, they were regular exercisers, they had a much better survival rate according to the studies, they were at lower risk of hospitalization than those who are not actively exercising. And then here's this study from the Kaiser Permanente people. They studied 48,000 adults with confirmed test results positive for COVID between January and October of 2020. They showed that those who were active were much, much less likely, to, if they were active for at least 150 minutes per week, had much lower risk of hospitalization, intensive care unit admission, or death than those who were not active before they got um, COVID. So one of the ways to build your immune system is exercise. What good things, how does it build our body's immune system? Exercise flushes microbes, that's viruses, bacteria, fungus, out of the lungs. It improves levels of white blood cells, that's the abbreviation WBC, and antibodies. In fact, if you're getting the vaccine, it improves your chances for a better take, uh, higher antibody levels after the vaccine. Higher body temperatures help fight off infection better, and of course exercise raises body temperature. And exercise slows down the release of stress hormones. But we don't want to overexercise because that can be bad for the immune system. If we exercise too intensely, it can weaken our immune system. Uh, things like marathon training, uh, intense gym training. Some people are finding that uh, this is um, working against uh, their immunity. And so what we want to do is improve antibody levels and uh, fight uh, infections better. And um, moderate exercise is good. So what counts as moderate exercise? Bicycling a few times a week, even if it's at the pace of children. If you've got some children to go out biking with, don't think that you're not getting a benefit. You are. Taking walks daily outdoors. If you can manage 20 to 30 minutes, 
that's really great. But hey, the study showed that even as little as a five minute walk, you still get benefits from that. And gardening. Gardening is a moderate exercise that's really good and it combines some of the other things that build our immune system, such as sunlight and fresh outdoor air. Fresh outdoor air has negative ions that create a positive mood. Exercise decreases inflammation and clotting. You know that COVID has three phases. Inflammation is the second stage, it's called cytokine storm, and clotting is the third stage where you know the blood can't uh, flow through the arteries and so the oxygen gets doesn't get delivered to the cells and so the oxygen level drops. And so exercise can decrease inflammation and clotting. It reduces oxidative stress, that's the aging process. Think of it as rusting out. When metal rusts, it's oxidizing. And exercise improves blood sugar and cholesterol metabolism. Physical exercise as a tool to help the immune system against COVID-19, that's the title of the study that I'm um, giving you this information from. Uh, it's at an integrated review of the current literature. And so, other good things that exercise does, it decreases anxiety, reduces insomnia, helps you get a better night's sleep. It improves mood and fights depression. It's an excellent antidepressant exercise is. And you can see some of the evidence for this at my website, drcarney.com. This beautiful lady achieved the weight that she wanted, but not only through exercise. What she was doing that was really helpful to her was a special diet, which we're going to be talking about this week. And it's really a lifestyle more than a diet. It's actually an eating style. We call it a way of eating. And I want to bring to you a landmark study that just opened my eyes. When this was published in June of this year, 2021, this scientific study was published in the British Medical Journal of Nutrition. They studied more than 2,800 healthcare workers, so doctors and nurses treating COVID patients in the hospital, more than six different countries. If they ate this way that we're gonna be talking about this week, they had a 73% lower risk of moderate or severe COVID, so much less chance of having to be admitted to the hospital and much less chance of dying. Wow, improving your odds of surviving COVID by 73%? Friends, if that were the only thing that this way of eating, this diet style that I'm gonna be talking to you about, if that were the only thing that it could do, wouldn't it be worth it? Worth any inconvenience or challenge of changing the way that we've always eaten for the sake of the immune system alone? Scientific proof of a 73% lower risk of dying, yet as great as it is to postpone your funeral, that's not all the good things that this way of eating has been scientifically proven to do. So let's look at a success story from my former practice. And on Monday night, we're gonna see how this gentleman uh, reversed his type two diabetes. Look at those eyes, don't they just tell a story? I love this. And people who have a family history of diabetes, they feel like they're doomed, but we can outrun even a family history if we know the right foods that will help you to become insulin sensitive instead of insulin resistant. This dear lady stands five feet tall, and in the first picture, she's 400 pounds. And in the second photo, her mother is standing in one leg of her former slacks, as my patient stands in the other leg, 200 pounds lighter after two years eating one special diet that we'll discuss this week. Yes, it's a plant-based diet. And twin models Nina and Randa Nelson wrote a great book called The Clear Skin Diet. These beauties cleared up their skin on the special way of eating the plant-based diet that we're gonna be talking about this week in Pine Bluff. And they're not the only ones who found their way to a plant-based diet because people understand that it gives you better brain power like Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, or Albert Einstein, well-acknowledged genius, scientist Jane Goodall, or theoretical physicist Brian Greene, who's famous for string theory the co-creator of the Heimlich Maneuver, um, and the surgeon, uh, Dr. Heimlich, and the father of the graham cracker. They all were on the plant-based diet, but they're not all, it's not just the brain that benefits, it's the body too. There's athletes like Kyrie Irving, and of course, famous tennis player, Venus Williams, and uh, Olympic snowboarder, Hannah Teeter, and regular ordinary people like you and me who just wanna be stronger, faster, better athletically. And we can become not only the athlete we wanna be, but a plant-based diet has been scientifically proven to help us get better grades, uh, send depression into remission, 
prevent cancer and prevent um, risk of dying from COVID. This is Tia Blanco. She's the championship winner of the Women's Surfing Championship for several years in a row. And now I'd like to call up Dr. Ferdinand Samuel, and he is an anesthesiologist who has been serving this community for many years, and he's going to tell us about the plant-based diet. What good things could it do for athletes? So let's give him a hand. He's the one, when you go into the operating room, he puts you to sleep, keeps you from feeling the pain, wakes you up successfully, all the while protecting your airway. Thank you, Dr. Samuel, for being with us. My pleasure. <laughs> and now I'm gonna give you that one. So tell us, Dr. Samuel, what good things could the plant-based diet do for athletes? We found out that those who are on plant-based diet raise their energy levels and they increase their endurance not only raise the levels but the, re the energy that you you have attained will last much longer and also added benefit is that this plant-based diet help you heal from any injuries it repairs itself much faster than if you're not a plant-based diet excellent that's great to know so can you give us uh, another real life example of athletes who, who improve their performance on a plant-based diet? How many of you know about Tennessee Titans? Yes, Tennessee Titans, the football team. They found out that when they went on plant-based diet, it made a big difference in, in the results of their play uh, for the whole team. Absolutely it did. And what happened in 2018 for the Titans? Well, 2018, 2017, their linebacker, Derek Morgan, and his wife, plant-based chef, Charity Morgan, they experienced with plant-based diet, and he found out that he, his endurance, his energy levels were so high that he started talking to his teammates and convinced 15 of them to go on plant-based diet. And then, when 15 of them went on plant-based diet, they started playing better. So that was happened in 2017. In 2018, the whole team played so well, they placed third in the AFC East Division. Then in 2019, they jumped up to second place because of the 15, just 15 players who adopted plant-based diet. Unfortunately, at the end of 2019, this Derek Morgan retired, so I don't have any statistics after that. Uh, excellent, that's very encouraging. Could you please tell our audience where they can see more real-life success stories about the plant-based athletes? Yes, if you go to gamechangersmovie.com, you can see all these results of the plant-based diet. In fact, I would encourage one of each one of you, this week, if you can go to your Netflix account and go to gamechangersmovie.com, you can watch this movie and see all that I have been talking about. And tell us about the world's strongest man in that movie. What does he eat? Oh, the world's, the, the man who holds the, holds the title of the world's strongest man eats plant-based diet. In fact, you can watch him pick up six adult men all at one time and walk down the street <laughs> as if it was nothing. Plant-based diet. Oh, that's a, that must be a sight to see. Thank you, Dr. Sam, that's excellent. Thank you for being here, appreciate your time. My pleasure. Okay, you can meet him in person after this presentation. And if you have questions and you don't have access to the internet, what we can do is our team at the registration booth can type in your question. There's a, a button you can click on healthreboot.com to submit your question, but our team will type it in for you if, uh, if you don't have access to the internet. We're not gonna answer uh, questions tonight, but keep coming back night after night. Uh, be sure to include your email address, your phone number, if you haven't registered. 
so that we can um, send you some helpful links. Switch your mic. Yes, I will. Okay, the Eat Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets. This was published in January of 2019. 37 scientists, it's a peer-reviewed report, they said that the way we produce food, the way we eat, is destroying our health and the environment. And so they said survival depends on eating plants and avoiding what? Survival depends on eating plants and avoiding meat. You heard it from the Eat Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets. And it worked for Heather. This is Heather before and after adopting a diet without dietary oil, without egg, dairy, animal products, or flesh foods like chicken and fish. I was hired as the medical director for the first seven of the Engine 2 immersions produced for Whole Foods Market in 2010 by Rip Esselstyn. Austin's plant-based firefighter turned health educator. RIP offered the employees of Whole Foods Market a scientifically validated one-week live-in seminar based on research by scientists like Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a nutritional biochemist from Cornell University, and the surgeon from that famous film, Forks Over Knives, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Jr., MD, who wrote the book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. He's from the Cleveland Clinic, and he showed documented proof on angiogram of cleaned out heart arteries from choosing better foods. Together, we all worked together for improving the health of the employees so that we could lower healthcare costs for their employer, Whole Foods Market. And the team of wise scientists who gathered at the Engine 2 immersion are those who, some of whom were in this famous movie, Forks Over Knives. How many of you have seen Forks Over Knives? Forks Over Knives is worth watching. You can get that on the internet also. It talks about curing your disease with the food on your fork instead of relying on a surgeon's scalpel. When Nazi Germany in World War II overran Norway during the World War II, they commandeered all the pigs and chickens and cows and fish to feed their own German soldiers, taking away the foods the animal foods from the Norwegians. Because the common people did not have food from animals, they saw a dramatic drop in heart attacks, stroke, and cancer because all they had was vegetables and fruits from their garden. Rates of cardiovascular disease went down during the war years, but after the war, back into their diet came the oil and the animal products, and up, up, up rose the level of strokes and heart attacks. So how did Whole Foods Market decrease their health care costs as Engine 2 Immersion made their employees healthier through the oil-free plant-based foods? I'm so grateful for my experience as medical director of the Engine 2 Immersion because I saw with my own eyes fantastic results in one week. Blood sugars got better despite my lowering doses of medication. Blood pressures got lower and I wasn't adding any new drugs to get these levels to drop. Levels of cholesterol and triglyceride went down, and for those who wanted to lose weight, some of them dropped almost a pound a day while eating all the food they wanted. It was buffet style. They could go back for seconds and thirds and loving the oil-free whole plant foods. For many of the whole foods market employees, they learned how to eat more and weigh less. And now you too can share the secrets that they learned to better health. You can learn to love this plant-based food like they did. When I started loving the oil-free plant-based food, I reversed my asthma, which I'd had since toddlerhood. After giving up meat, dairy, eggs, and dietary oil, then I was no longer asthmatic. If I eat animal products or oil, the mucus and the wheezing come back within 24 hours. So, now I'd like to call up Pastor Michael Wolford. He serves the Pine Bluff community as a Bible-believing Christian. Please join me in welcoming Pastor Michael Wolford. Okay. Good evening. <laughs> Pastor Wolford, um, I've heard you say that God cares about our health, including our mental health, our spiritual health, our physical health. Where in the Bible do you find that idea? Well, in John 10.10. 10. The Bible says, I am come that they might have life 
and that they will have it more abundantly. Well, what does abundant life look like anyway? Think about it. God loves to give people power to break habits that are robbing them of health. God loves to give you power to break those habits and addictions that are uh, really damaging your body, your mind, your whole life. And so God said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, but I've come. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. God loves to give people power, not only to break bad habits, to, but to make new habits, to build new habits that'll give you abundant life, one day at a time, more and more and more. God loves to refresh people mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. God is in this business of helping people. God loves to help discouraged people have hope. He loves to help weak people with mighty power. He loves to help strong people to get stronger. He likes to help healthy people get healthier and sick people get well. He likes to help young people and old people. God loves to help people because God loves people. And that's what the Bible says there. By the way, Dr. Linda and the rest of you, uh, the Bible has more to say about health and science than most people realize. bad habits, to conquer addictions, and uh, to build new habits, and go for it. God bless. Well, we'll turn the time back over to you. That's enough for tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Bowman. Let's give him a hand. There's evidence from science and the Bible that plant-based diets are healthy, and we can enjoy a longer life through a closer relationship with God through studying his word. How many of you think that you could um, think up maybe a question or two for Pastor Wolford uh, when we have our ongoing support group on Tuesday night? Because on Tuesday night, he's going to help us uh, see what the Bible says about power to break free from addictions and answer questions like, if God is so good, why is there so much suffering? And uh, I, yeah, I think it's going to be very, very helpful on the Tuesday night one. And there's also the Monday night one where you get to taste the food and talk a little bit more about the science. And I'll be at the Monday night support groups and the Tuesday support groups right here in the Reynolds Center, 7 p.m. So when I go to different plant-based conferences and I speak with other scientists who are famous in the plant-based world as well as um, outside the plant-based world, I'm, I'm struck with something remarkable, remarkably similar that many of them say. And that is, these renowned dietitians and pharmacists and plant-based physicians are saying something amazing. They're saying, if you want to be healthy, live like a Seventh-day Adventist has been advised to live. So who are the Seventh-day Adventists? They're a Protestant denomination of Christians who believe that God can give us the power to break free from addictions. <laughs> the most common addictions are addictions to unhealthy foods and beverages. And you see, people can live without nicotine. They can live without alcohol, but they can't live without food. You've got to have food. And so how to choose the right foods, that's, um, for some of us, it takes miracles to figure out how to choose the right foods. And for those who have been able to change, God is the one who gives every good gift, according to the Bible. So what did the Adventist Health Study 2 reveal to the world? Well, the Adventist Health Study 2 studied 96,000 adults, Adventists, from the USA and Canada, and only 8% of them ate no animal products. They were completely plant-based. Now, 48% of them were non-vegetarian. That means they ate meat, including beef, chicken, pork, fish, whatever, more than once. 
hospital system. And uh, is there anything that we can do when we're, when we're home and you know, they say there's no treatment for it? Is there anything that we can do naturally to boost our immune system? And then there's cytokine storm. That's inflammation. You've heard of the spike protein. And then phase three is the blood clots. Blood clots prevent lungs from exchanging oxygen. Clots cause many organs to fail as cells die from lack of oxygen from blocked blood flow from the blood clot so that oxygen cannot reach the cellular level. Is there anything we can learn from history? What about that H1N1 Spanish flu pandemic we had in 1918? Hospitals were overflowing. See the patients and the nurses out on the front lawn of hospitals. The death rates worldwide for those who were infected with COVID were 10 to 20 percent. And uh, looking at the nurses out there, it just reminds me how grateful I am and have, have been my whole career to the nurses. So first phase of COVID, natural remedies that may help you before you get to the emergency department so that you can prevent getting into the stage of the clots and then the hospitalizations. If I didn't have evidence from history to prove how helpful certain home remedies can be to build the immune system, I wouldn't dare to mention them. Now, I'm not mentioning these to these natural remedies to replace medical care, but they're in addition to medical care. And you see, the innate immune system is separate from our adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system builds the antibodies. SARS and MERS suppress the innate immune system, and then they force it into overdrive, dampening down the antiviral response of interferon, which helps to spike viruses. And so because interferon is down, that results in uncontrolled viral replication inside our body. The virus is growing, multiplying. So strengthening the innate immune system has been scientifically studied as a good way to fight COVID, not as a replacement of medical care, but in addition. What is hydrotherapy and how can it help in the first phase of COVID? We have scientific evidence that hydrotherapy can help patients out of the overwhelmed hospitals. That's why I'm mentioning this. By making patients um, better in conjunction, that no one thing works alone. You have to put multiple layers uh, in armor against this disease. It's a bad disease. So that they won't need the hospital. Hydro means water. And when you use alternating hot and cold water, whether it's in the shower or with towels, you can raise the body temperature. And hydrotherapy saved lives. Remember the pictures of the nurses and the patients out on the front lawn? Hydrotherapy saved lives in the 1918 flu pandemic. I'm going to quote the statistics in just a minute. It's actually been helping to save lives in the past 18 months. Now just one thing alone, remember, one thing alone won't work, but if you add in the plant-based diet and hydrotherapy, you can learn more at hydroforcovid.com and fresh outdoor air, which has negative ions that are very healing getting to bed before 10 p.m., a special diet, that plant-based diet, and sunlight, together, these things are making a difference for people's immune systems. So here's the um, website, and it's magnified, so you can see Hydro for COVID. Anytime you want to lift up your um, phone and take a picture of these slides, please feel free to do that. And hydrotherapy has been shown to be an immune system builder that makes physiologic sense, and it comes with historical evidence, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but hydrotherapy is powerful and you want to keep your doctor informed. I know I keep saying this all through, but keep your doctor informed. Your medications may need adjusting. There's a place on the hydroforcovid.com website. It's called the letter to my doctor. So you want to print that if you're going to, if you're going to adopt some of these principles and let your doctor know so that your doctor can be your partner. The reason I tell you this is because we want to raise the core temperature with hot water. This work was pioneered by a Nobel Prize winner in medicine in 1927, Dr. Julius Warner Warek. And what he did was, it was his work in treating neurosyphilis. And he raised the patient's body temperature and that helped the body to fight the germs causing the infection. And he got the Nobel Prize for that. Remember, this is just in addition to medical care. So what happened in history? What happened in 1918? How did people um, survive the 1918 flu pandemic when the hospitals were overflowing and 10 to 20% of the people worldwide who got the disease were dying from it? In 
in those days, in the two decades before this uh, flu pandemic arose, a different kind of a hospital was starting to be um, come into existence in this country, um, actually and around the world, and they were called sanitariums. And the word sanitarium is kind of a play on healing, um, san sanitary, you know, um, healing. And so they were healing hospitals, and they were run by Christians called Seventh-day Adventists who used natural remedies and plant-based diet. As they would do surgery, they used the medicines. They did what it took to save lives. And uh, some of their ways of helping people get better was plant-based diet, outdoor air and sunlight. It's, it, you know, it's uh, when the hospitals have no room and you're out on the front lawn, they're giving you outdoor air and sunlight. They used the water, that's the hydrotherapy, and early bedtimes. Hospitals were full. Death rate was 20 to 10 to 20 percent nationwide, um, actually worldwide for those who got COVID. But they survived the flu in an amazing way. The people who made their way through sanitariums, because of the special diet, prayer, hydrotherapy, hot and cold water, uh, sunlight, outdoor air, those in the 10 Adventist sanitariums succeeded in saving almost 99 percent of the admitted patients who were able to walk into their hospitals. They, they pretty much were saying if the patient walked in, they had a really good chance of being able to save them. Now contrast this with um, other places. Before we go to the other places, there's a little place in Northern California called St. Helena, California, in the Napa Valley. And this is the St. Helena Sanitarium, and it had been a sanitarium, it's now a hospital. And at that time, they were using a plant-based diet, outdoor air, sunlight, water, sleep. And there you see the nurses and the patients out on the front porch of the hospital. And the best medical care at the time was thought to come from the Army hospitals. And the Army hospitals were following traditional medical methods of treatment, whereas the doctors and nurses in the sanitariums were using hot, wet towels called hydrotherapy, as well as these other modalities. And the H1N1 death rate in the Army camps was 6.7%. But in the sanitariums with the plant-based diet and the hydrotherapy and the sunlight and the fresh air, the death rate was 1.34% dead. And so um, hydrotherapy can slow down viral growth. It can decrease inflammation, but people alternate hot and cold showers, three minutes of hot, especially to the nape of the neck. That's really, you wanna keep your head out of um, the, the hot water. I mean, you can wash your hair, but you don't, you don't want your, your um, head to be kept into the water as hot as you can stand on the nape of your neck. Um, three minutes of hot and then 30 seconds of cold, alternate back and forth. Repeat this three times, always end on cold. Put socks on right away, stay warm, rest, get into bed afterwards. That's gonna, that has been shown to boost the immune system, natural killer cells and, and other, uh, it does good things for white blood cells and antibody levels. There are many stories among Adventist doctors, even today, helping people with COVID, even in our day. So, um, remember, your doctor may want to lower your medication doses if you use hydrotherapy. And you want to come on Monday nights if you want to taste it and see how you can reverse these diseases. And on Tuesday night, you get the spiritual power. Now, this is Tracy McWhorter, and she's not connected with the Adventist Church, but she's been a plant-based eater for 40 years. She's beautiful, she's in her mid-50s, look how beautiful she is. And she's written a dynamite cookbook by any grains necessary. And I want you to know that African-American women are leading the way in America's fastest growing demographic, plant-based black people. 8% of African-Americans are plant-based compared to just 3% of the U.S. total population. And tomorrow, when you come for the weight loss lecture, we're gonna talk about which foods have fiber and which foods have no fiber. The more fiber in our food, the easier it is to lose weight. And Tracy's program in the book by Any Greens Necessary is a fiber-based program because only plants have fiber. So 7 p.m. tomorrow night, how to become slender and lively, yet never be pridely. <laughs> and this is beautiful Jessica. Before giving up dietary oils, dairy, meat, and eggs, thank you, Jessica, for letting me share your beautiful before and after pictures. She's down 85 pounds on a plant-based diet. So on Monday night, we're going to talk about diabetes type 2. Even people with a family history can reverse diabetes type 2 and 
come see more of my patients tomorrow night. This is um, some before and after pictures where we share how to lose weight with a tasty plate. Let's look at some of the other topics we'll be going through uh, the rest of the week on Tuesday. We'll be talking about health issues, especially as related to hormones for both men and women. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about blood pressure. One of the most common reasons for people to visit the doctor is for blood pressure medication. 66% of us are taking blood pressure medicine. Uh, I'm sorry, two thirds of us are taking a blood pressure medicine by the time we're 66 years old. And wouldn't you like to no longer need blood pressure medicine because your blood pressure becomes normal? Uh, heart issues. We want to outrun big killers like heart attack, cardiovascular disease like stroke. On Thursday, we'll talk about preventing cancer and what the plant based diet can do to keep you out of cancer or help you get into remission from it. On Friday, we're going to talk about depression and anxiety and give you hope. It's true, green blunt the blues. Keep eating your greens. And on Saturday, we're going to talk about painful conditions and autoimmune um, diseases. So here is Eric Adams. And you may know him. He's, uh, although he's currently president of the New York Borough of Brooklyn, he's running for mayor of New York City. And Eric eats a plant-based diet. He gave up dietary oils, dairy, meat, and eggs. Go, Eric. And so, thank you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I want you to eat more, weigh less. Come back tomorrow night and we'll find out how. Bring your family and friends. If you didn't register, friends, we don't have your contact information. Please stop at the registration booth. Help us keep in touch with you so that if we don't get your question answered this week, maybe we can send you some helpful links and a sort of, you know, listening to catch up and, and, and figure things out because we want answers that work for you in your life. Thank you.